I'm going to begin with a bit of a spoiler alert uh, in case you haven't seen this movie. But I wanted to begin by talking about the end of a trilogy, the 2012 movie, The Dark Knight Rises. And in this movie, we see Gotham, which has continually faced peril after peril, face yet another one, the return of a fringe part of the group, the League of Shadows. Now, normally Gotham has been able to have the masked vigilante, the Batman, protect them from any harm that befalls them. However, this time, a member of the League, the villain Bane, breaks Batman's back and throws him in a pit where it seems like he will never be able to climb out of. Now, for most stories at this point, this is where everyone panics and doesn't know what to do. And we have a long waiting until either the hero returns or a new hero rises up to save these people. But we don't see that with Gotham City. Instead, we see the people that the Batman has worked with and has strengthened in his time serving Gotham. And these people, people like Commissioner Jim Gordon and Detective John Blake, and even those who work for the Batman's alter ego, like Lucius Fox, rise up as they plan a way to end Bane and the League of Shadows reign over the city. And it is during this time that these people, as they gather together, as they gather others, policemen, and other citizens of Gotham together, that they learn of a plot by Bane to use a bomb to destroy the city. And these people gather together without the Batman, without any other help. Even the U.S. government, who at this point have abandoned the city, without any help other than themselves, they find a way to track the bomb and to be able to save the city. Now, this isn't to say that they don't need any help along the way. At one point, Detective Blake finds himself surrounded by the League, and Commissioner Gordon finds himself exiled, doomed to cross the frozen river of Gotham alone. And it is at this point that the Batman returns. He saves Blake and Gordon and goes on to help lead the forces in their final battle with the League and Bane. And finally, the Batman is able to take the bomb away from the city and save it from destruction. During this movie, the Batman was away for a great deal of Bane's reign of terror. But that didn't mean that there weren't others who could rise up in his absence. He had worked with his allies and prepared them so that they could help in a crisis. So they were equipped to do the work that needed to be done. And when they did need his help, he was able to be there to assist them, to help them finish the work they had started. Just like we see with Paul in our reading from 1 Corinthians this morning. 
Paul, as an apostle, is the pastor for the Corinthian church. But Corinth is not the only place under his care. We see from the many letters he wrote to many different churches that he had several places that he led and taught at. And so, because he had many places to be, he was often traveling. He often could not be there in Corinth in person. And while Paul continues to offer wisdom and guidance to the church in Corinth, obviously he can't be there to run everything that goes on. But that doesn't mean that church doesn't continue to happen. That doesn't mean that Paul had left the Corinthian church unequipped, unable to do God's work. In fact, we learn that Paul in our lesson today has done the opposite. He's helped build up the people so that they can do the work of the church in his absence. As Paul says to the Corinthians this morning, I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. From this passage we see that God doesn't just come for the apostles. He doesn't just come for his clergy. He comes to all of us who are part of the fellowship of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that is all who are baptized in his name. In the name of our God, the one in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so all are equipped to do God's work in the world through whatever spiritual gifts are given to each of us. And as Paul will tell us later in this letter to the Corinthians, we all have different gifts to offer. And we don't all have the same gifts as each other. And we need that. We need many different people with many different gifts to help build up and continue the work of the church. This, however, doesn't mean that Paul's gifts aren't needed as well. In fact, that's the reason that he writes this letter. The Corinthians are still learning and growing in their faith. They still make mistakes. And that is why Paul writes to them. As we'll see next week, they need to be reminded that it is Christ and Christ alone who they follow. He needs to remind them that even though their sins are forgiven, as we will see later in this letter, there's still a standard by which we live our lives. That we live our lives to God and God alone. And so we best do, we do our best to follow in God's paths. And Paul writes to them to remind them about what it means to be a member of the fellowship of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Because that is his gift. 
It is Paul's gift to be an apostle and teacher, to help lead and guide the church to truly listen to what God is telling them. Just like Gotham needed everyone to stand up against the threat of Bane, the church needs everyone using their gifts to continue its work. Because everyone has God-given gifts to use. Everyone is a part of the work God has given us to do. Not just you, not just me, but us together. And just like in Gotham, the church needs guidance sometimes in certain situations. That's where Paul comes in, gently guiding the church in its course, even from afar. Here at St. Paul's, we are no strangers to having to rise up and use our gifts in service to the church. It's how we've been able to survive and thrive without a pastor, priest, and teacher to help lead us and guide us. It is how we have been able to weather both the good times and the bad. So now that we have a pastor, priest, and teacher, we have an incredible opportunity an opportunity to continue to build those gifts that we each have and to continue to grow stronger as we move forward together. We have the chance not to just continue to thrive as we have, but to flourish as we continue to do God's work in the world. My personal hope is to take my own gifts and to use my own role to help us to do that, to grow stronger in the things we already do well so that we can continue to do God's work in spreading the gospel through word and deed to the world abroad. And I hope as we continue to move forward in our lives together that you will use my role and my gifts to continue to help you to grow stronger in your own gifts. I hope that each of you will be able to use what wisdom I do have and what teachings I can offer to continue to help you to move closer to God. And in using my gifts and my presence among you, I hope that we can move forward as one, as we continue to do the work God has given us to do in this town of Greensboro and to the rest of God's creation.